What's going on YouTube? It's Master Aquatics and I'm bringing you guys another video. So check it out. My fry, my 75 gallon tank, they are doing A-OK. -okay. They have gotten pretty big. I can actually sell these guys if I wanted to, but I'm not going to sell these guys and I'm also not going to give these guys away. A lot of them ended up dying and I think I'm left with around nine. There's still some hiding behind the crypts here and hiding behind the crypts over there. Um, if I were to go over there, I could pull out a few or show you guys a few in the bushes or whatever, but pretty soon they'll be hitting uh, nickel size. And I like this one right here um, because you can tell it's a veil, as you can see, or at least it looks like a veil. To me, it looks like a veil. Um, I'm hoping it is a veil because veils are very beautiful. Um, veil means that the angelfish will have very long uh, fins. Um, and this one looks like a standard fin. doesn't look like they are going to um, be long like the veil fins. There we go. I just had to adjust the lighting a little bit just so I can get some better shots for you guys. Anyways, um, now I do have some more in the 20-gallon tank. Let me go ahead and show you guys those angelfish. So this is my 20 gallon tank and I have one angelfish here and then there's one right there hiding behind the uh, sponge filter. I'm not sure if there's another one. I don't think, yeah I think it's just two. Um, and you might be wondering why do you have these two in here. Uh, reason being is because I was experiencing a lot of deaths in the 75 gallon tank and I freaked out and I put a handful in here um, but now I feel comfortable moving them into the 75 gallon tank because I haven't seen any deaths in quite some time. Now after taking these guys out this tank is not going to be empty. I'm actually starting another project in this tank. Um, if you're wondering what that is let me go ahead and show you. Now I got some angelfish eggs here. It's on a green slate. You can find this green slate on eBay. Search angelfish breeding slate and it'll pop up. They are $7. I'll post a link in the description. I'm going to go ahead and hatch these eggs in here. I'm going to go ahead and put the eggs back in some water so that way they don't dry out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead get these two guys and move them on out of here. All right, angelfish number one. Let's go ahead and get him out of here. Oh, oh, he just, he just dashed out the way. Let's get this little guy in, in the net. Thank you for willingly going into the net. You saved me a lot of trouble. All right, fish number two. All right, so angelfish number two. Not sure where he went. Oh, there he is. I found you little guy. It's time to get you. I got you now. I got you now. Oh, no, I don't got you. Oh, now I got you. Who are you trying to play? Don't play with me. All right, in you go into your new home, buddy. Have fun. All right, cool. So now we got all the fish out of this aquarium. Let's go ahead and put my angel fish eggs in here so that way they can hatch it in the next few days. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the slate and I'm just gonna put it in there. Simple as that. Now you do wanna try to put them in front of some some type of bubbles or any, or something similar to that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to position the slate right behind the sponge filters but it's not really working out for me. So let me just, there we go that should be good right there you don't want too much aeration you want just a decent amount that's actually way too far but let me see if I can pump up the volume on my air pump actually it's already high okay well I'm pretty sure they'll still hatch I might just get a lot of white eggs probably not that much but ain't no thing I'll just go ahead and remove the white eggs manually like I usually do and it'll be fine. So I'm not really worried about these guys. I'm sure they'll hatch. I know they'll hatch. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna feed them. Alright, so I just got a small pinch. And I'm just gonna crush that up as fine as I can. And voila. And they're gonna go ahead and start eating. Let me just close the lid. Adjust the light so that way we can see my children enjoy their food. These guys are awesome. This one is a this one is a veil. You can tell that one's a veil. That one's a standard fin. Um, this one. 
That one looks like it's a veil. That's standard fin. That's pretty good uh, finish right there on that angelfish. It's long and big. And this one looks nice too. I'm just really excited about these guys. Uh, now I wanted to talk about the maintenance on this tank. Now, this tank, I've always had an allergy problem with this tank. So what I've been doing is I've been only using the light on this tank about two to four to five hours a day. What I'll do is I'll leave the lights off. Um, I don't put lights, I don't turn on the lights in this tank during the daytime. I usually just turn on the lights um, at night, uh, like a few hours before I go to bed. Reason being, is that I'm trying to destroy all this algae in here. You know, I could get some algae eating fish, but these guys are really small. I don't want anybody nipping at their fins um, and damaging their fins, cause then that'll ruin the quality of these fish. And then I won't be able to sell them and that's not good. I don't want that to happen. Um, I'm keeping the lights off because I want to get rid of all this black beard algae it's destroying my plants actually I think the method that I'm doing is actually working because I do see some new growth here and I also see a very bright green leaf here but if you just look at this leaf here it is gone that leaf is I think it's just never gonna return um, it's just waiting for me to trim it and cut it I need to cut a lot of these leaves I also need to go in and trim some of the leaves off of the cribs because they also have some leaves covered in black algae just not as bad as the nubius over here i mean this just looks horrendous i really need to do something about it pretty soon i just haven't really been motivated to maintain uh this tank i've been focusing on my 125 gallon tank i've also been focusing on the 29 gallon tank um also been you know trying to make sure that the babies are okay in a 10 gallon tank and then you know by the time i get to these guys i'm just all worn out um, i do feed them um, i really don't need to do too many water changes for them because there's just 10 of them in this tank and i mean it's fine the hormone levels shouldn't be too high because there's only 10 fish in here they are the only fish in here they get along fine um, and i don't feed them too much i pretty much just feed them once a day um, just to avoid overfeeding them because you know it's really easy to overfeed baby angelfish when you're feeding them flakes um, or when you're feeding them anything besides baby brine shrimp. If you're still feeding them baby brine shrimp when they're about this big, they can eat that stuff all day. Because baby brine shrimp is extremely small um, and it can, you know, it usually takes a large amount for them to get full off of that when they're this big. Um, they can still eat baby brine shrimp when they're this big, but it's just, it's better off to get them to get used to the flakes and have them start eating that. Um, but that's the, I would say that's the hardest thing about raising baby angelfish is getting them to start eating flakes. That's the hardest thing ever because they will literally starve themselves because they don't want to eat flakes. They'd rather eat baby brine shrimp. Uh, they, they think that's more appetizing and they, they think it tastes better. It's just like, you know, your cat and dog. Um, when you switch their food to a different brand, they're not going to eat it right away or they just might not eat it, you know, at all, period. And that's how it is. So, you will get some deaths. They might starve themselves. Um, but, I mean, if you're pretty experienced, then you'll find a way around that. Me, I still haven't found a loophole around that, so I'm still working on that. Anyways, um, I probably will do a water change later on, uh, maybe this weekend. I'm not too sure. Um, I'm just dealing too much with a 125 gallon tank. You know, I've had this tank for almost three years now and it's, it's looked the same pretty much all throughout that time. So I'm really thinking of getting a, I'm really just thinking of re-aquascaping this tank. I like the crypts here, they're really big, they they are really bushy and full, but you know, I really just want to switch things up 
in this tank and just make it more appealing for the uh, baby angelfish in here. I believe they deserve better. Plus, I mean, the crypts here, they're not really growing any bigger than they have been the past six months. They've pretty much been the same size for the last six months. So I really need to, you know, figure out something here. I'm not dosing with anything. Um, it's just lighting and that's it. And uh, I use just about four hours of lighting. These plants are pretty, pretty low, low tech. I mean, you don't really need to do anything crazy with them and they will grow. I just have some crypts and some Anubias. I believe those are the only two plants that are in here. All right, so this batch of angelfish eggs is about my, I believe this is like my 10th batch, um, but this is my fourth uh, hopefully successful batch. I'm gonna try to hatch the eggs which should be no problem. I don't really have to do anything at this point. I might have to do, I'll probably do a water change uh, for this tank because there is some stuff down at the bottom. I'll have to go in there and clean it up but for sure these eggs are going to hatch. I'm not sure how many is going to hatch. I don't know if it's going to be half of these eggs because you never know. These eggs were laid today so it's really hard to tell how many are going to turn white. I do have a feeling that a good amount is going to turn white. Not because they weren't fertilized but just because the tank is not very clean. Like I mentioned and showed earlier there is some stuff at the bottom of the tank so I gotta go in there and do some water changes. It's okay to do a water change while you have eggs in your tank. Just make sure that the water levels aren't below the eggs where they will dry out and die. You don't want that to happen. Other than that, you're good to go. I can actually take this slate and lay it down sideways onto the floor of the aquarium and then go in there and do like a really good water change, um, which would be like, I would say, a 75% water change. But I'm really excited. Um, I'm just not excited about the water changes that I have to do uh, for these guys. Um, and uh, in about two days they will be wigglers and then five days after that they'll start free swimming and then i'll have to hatch baby brine shrimp on a daily basis over here which means i'll have to sleep with the air pump noises that uh, baby brine shrimp hatcheries make which is okay you get used to the noise after a while but you know it's hard to get used to it at first but after a week or so, you probably can't fall. You can't fall asleep unless you hear the noise, which is what happens with me. I'm not sure about you guys, but anyways, I just wanted to update you guys on the fry because I haven't really done that. They're still okay. I just have a few left. I do have a backup batch. Check it out here. Um, and I'll also be updating you guys on my other tanks pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, my name is Master Aquatics. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day and go to bed. Take care. Good night. Bye. Thank you, young God, for the blessing. Hey.